Thank you, Holy Spirit, you are Lord. Thank you, Jesus, you are Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Thank you. See you all tonight on Christ, the solid right we stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Thank you, Jesus. Please begin to invite somebody. Please begin to share this video. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, God bless you all tonight. God bless you. Please share this video with somebody. Because you never know who do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Or you never know who needs a word from the Lord. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. The songwriter said, On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Stand on the solid rock that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you all tonight for tuning in. I trust we all had a wonderful weekend or having a good week. If you are not on the prayer line, welcome this evening to this broadcast. The Lord bless you. God is good. I bring you greetings from the most important person in the world, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God. He is alive. He's active. And he is closer to you in the name of Jesus. You may think he's far away from you, but he's not. He's right there. All you have to do is to open up to him and allow him to have his will in your life in the name of Jesus. Well, tonight, as we all know, we are on a journey preparing the bride for the coming of the Lord. We are on an end time assignment or end time harvest for the Lord. Jesus Christ is coming back, and he's coming back for the ready church. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please share this video tonight. God bless you again. God bless you. Hallelujah. But saints of God, fellow believers, unbelievers, the topic tonight is very interesting. Does Jesus know you? Hmm. If I may drive tonight and go to a church or wherever believers are gathered and I ask this question, I may get a lot of yes. If you are unbeliever listening to me, does Jesus know you? If you are a believer listening to me this evening, does Jesus know you? Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. To 24. Since of God, fellow believers, unbelievers, this question is very significant to every one of us. The issue of eternity is rare. This may sound like repeating itself, but God wants us to live ready. God wants us to be ready when He comes. God wants you who are listening to me. To be ready when he calls you home. Because if the Lord do tarries, we will all meet him in death. And my question is tonight, does the Lord know you? Hallelujah. If you are listening to me and you have not given your life to Jesus and you are not saved, my question is, does he know you? Hallelujah. If you are saved and you are in the church, my question is, does the Lord already know you? So let's turn our Bibles. Thank you, Jesus. To Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23. Since of God, fellow believers, unbelievers, ladies and gentlemen, 
The enemy that fights or the devil is very strategic. The devil is not like God. He is not everywhere at the same time like God. But the devil has set things in place to bring down the lives of God's children. One of the reasons why God sent us on Facebook is to bring souls to him. And one thing God began to reveal in the process was the church has become so earth-centered. We are all enjoying earth and we are forgotten about heaven. Saints of God, fellow believers, unbelievers, the devil is no more after the word because he knows he already got them. But now he's after the church. And if we do not live ready, on that day we're going to be surprised. But I pray tonight this word will bring transformation. I pray tonight this word will help us to consider our work with God. The every day we rise and we say, God, do you really know me? Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 7, 21 to 24. The Bible says, the subtopic says, I never knew you. In the name of Jesus, it will not be our portion. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he will do the word of my father in heaven. Verse 22. <laughs> Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. To part from me, you practice, you will practice lawlessness. I pray in the name of Jesus, this will not be our portion. Thank you, Jesus. Saints of God, Calling the name of Jesus doesn't mean the Lord knows you. Hallelujah. Casting out demons doesn't mean the Lord knows you. Doing wonders in the name of Jesus doesn't mean the Lord knows you. Sinking in the choir doesn't mean Jesus knows you. Hallelujah. Preaching the word of God doesn't know Jesus, doesn't mean Jesus knows you. I pray we are thinking tonight. Again, if you're an unbeliever and you have not surrendered to the Lord, he doesn't know you. But I pray tonight is your night. Because you know what? Like I always say, everyone on the face of the earth, no matter who you are, we were all created in the image of God. And we all get a, we will all get account of God for our lives. So you may say to now I'm not a Christian. I am presenting the word of God to you tonight. That Jesus Christ is the only way to God. There is no other way. And I pray tonight you will lead transform. You will come to understand that indeed Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Again, Muhammad is not the way. Buddha is not the way. New age. All what they have out there is not a way. Jesus Christ is the only way to God in the name of Jesus. So my question is, believers, unbelievers, does Jesus know you? Singing in the choir doesn't mean he know you. Being on the usher team doesn't mean he knows you. Hallelujah. Performing church activity doesn't mean the Lord knows you. Today is so sad because Many try to hide their identity when it comes to being a Christian. Many a times I go out to witness. And when I ask, are you a Christian? Or do you go to church? Oh yes, I go to church. I play the organ and I mean they just go on. So it is so easy to hide their activities. And think you are worshiping God. But so now I come to expose to you that it's not just performing religious duty. Because Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship. That's why you need to come in connection with Jesus. 
Building of constant relationship with him. A consistent relationship with the Lord God Almighty. That's what makes you a Christian. It's not religious duties. Thank you, Jesus. Do the Lord know you? Does he know you? That's my question tonight for every one of us. Again, like I said, going to church doesn't mean he knows you. I want this word tonight to sit in our spirit. People of God, you don't want to be surprised on judgment day. Because the fact remains that we will be judged by God. After life, there is death. There is eternity we have to face. And we have two destinations. Heaven or hell. And Jesus Christ is the way to heaven. But after you have accepted Jesus Christ, what do you do with your life? Are you just professing his name? You know the name of Jesus is so powerful. The name of Jesus. And we can understand the importance and the significance of the name of Jesus. We will not just call it anyhow and anything or anytime. Because that name carries authority. And that's what you can be playing in church. You can be doing fornication, adultery, drinking, smoking, gossiping. And call upon that name and something can happen. Because that name is so powerful. That name has authority. It can turn the lives of people around. And because of that, many are walking in this session. They think they can play church. And think they know the Lord. No. It is his name. His name has important. His name is powerful. His name is so significant. His name has the power to turn the hearts of everyone towards him. That's the name of Jesus. So the fact you are calling his name every day. Does he mean he knows you? What makes the difference? It's the life you live. It's the relationship you have with the Lord. That's what makes the difference. I come tonight in the name of Jesus. To get our minds back together on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is no more time to play games with God. It is no more time to play chess with God. It is no more time to play wiki washing. It is time to turn to God in righteousness. I am a voice in the wilderness Christ say, come to God. Turn from your wicked ways and come to the Lord. Jesus Christ is real. The next minute is not promised to you, somebody. The next second is not promised to you. I cannot oversay this. It is time. That everyone listening to me and those who will listen to me, it is time, saints of God, unbelievers, believers, to come and take your work with God very serious. Because the God we serve, He's the God of love. The God we serve, He's the God of judgment. And Jesus Christ is coming back. If you don't know this, He's coming back. It is time to put aside playing games. You don't play games with Jesus. Because this sin is real, people. It is real. You don't play games with Jesus. You don't just come to God because you want something. Come to God because you love him. Tonight, as you will give your life to Jesus Christ, somebody. Or tonight, you will really give your life to Jesus Christ. Please recognize your need for help. It's not because you want a new car. Or because you want a new house. No. Come to Jesus because you recognize your need for help. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So my thing is, does Jesus know you? You may have been in church for 25 years. Or maybe you have been calling his name. But you don't know that Jesus Christ is real. Thank you, sister. God bless you. Jesus Christ is real. The God that we serve as Christians is the living God. The God that every other religion is running after is a living God. And the only way to him is through Jesus. So tonight my question is, does the Lord know you? The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, whosoever, that means you who are listening to me tonight. It is your opportunity to make it right. 
It is your opportunity to turn to God in righteousness. If you have been playing. It is so sad. This dispensation, the 21st century. The fear of God has left the church. I preached a message on Sunday. That God is calling the church back. To turn to him in righteousness. The fear of God has left the church. You can come and play in sin. And take them back and go sin. Come on. You can come and play in sin and go preach God's word. No fear, no remorse. You can come from cause sin and just go in the church. I mean, I'm not saying that grace does not exist. But my thing is grace. It's not a license to live in sin. It doesn't mean because God has given us grace. It means you can just play church or play with your work with God. People, it is time to get real with God. Because everything that God has spoken in his word is coming to pass. The next minute, Christ can show up. The next minute, he may call you home. Every time somebody dies, I say, God, were they ready? People, the strategy of the enemy, he's not after the war anymore, he's after the church. And the sad place to be is to be in church and end up in hell. So sad. But I pray tonight, God will bring reawakening to us. To take our work with him very serious in the name of Jesus. So my question is, does Jesus know you? How do you know? He says, not all I say, Lord, 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 will enter the kingdom of heaven. But only those who do the will of their father. He said, they will say, Lord, we prophesy in your name. We did this in your name. Let me tell you a brief story. Many years ago when I got saved. The great man of God that read me that, that, that was breath on a bishop on his wide down. He didn't give a unique story. Because what I got saved, okay? You don't play games. Mm -mm. You either get it or you don't get it. And this man, he's about holiness. So what I knew was, when you are in sin, you can't do the work of God. When you are in sin, you don't have no anointing. Matter of fact, these days, you don't even know what is anointing and what is not. Because we have so many guests in the kingdom. People are so talented. And if you are not discerning, you will think that, oh, they are anointed. No. Check them out. It's not every spirit belongs to God. But anyway, so all what I knew, in order to serve God, you have to be so holy. I didn't know you could play in church and then, you know, and then go serve God. I didn't know all of those things. Because I was so hungry for God. So what happened? He told us a story. My father, I came in connection with somebody who was playing church. And every time they play church, they go and preach and they say something happened. I was like, how can this be? How can the Holy Ghost be with this person? They are left me in sin and they are playing church. And he took me back and said, you know what? The gift of God are irrevocable. What does that mean? We all have gifts. Even if right now you are listening to me, there is a gift in you that God wants you to use. If you have built that yourself to God, you will use that gift. Doesn't mean you live in holy or righteous or unrighteous. That gift will be manifested. But guess what? Do you want to just have gift and end up in hell? But anyway, long story short, he said there was this boy in the church. This boy was very gifted, very anointed. But guess what he was doing? He was sleeping with all the quiet girls in the church. After revival, he took them to parties and stuff. And then something, something went wrong. He almost lost his life. And he came to confess. And he said that if I had died today, everyone would think that I went to heaven. But guess what? Even though I was performing church duties, and all your thought was so anointed, but my lifestyle was different. So you say, you know what? Whenever, let me go to Psalm 106. Whenever you call the name of Jesus, that will begin with the name of Jesus. I'm saying this tonight so you can assess your life. If you have been shouting, jumping in church, and you leave from there and do something else, doesn't mean that God is with you. Mm -mm. Check it out. So Psalm 106 says what? Psalm 106, verse 8. The Bible says, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Come on, Abosha. Harabakaramasanda. Verse 8. Nevertheless, he was saved them for his name's sake, 
that he might make his mighty power known. Whenever you call the name of Jesus, no matter what kind of life you are living, the fact that God wants to save his people, God will be exalted. It doesn't mean because you see result. It means that God is with you. It is because of that name. It is because of that name. Because no one can defy this name. This name has standard. It has authority. Hallelujah. So how do you know that you are with God? How do you know that God knows your name? Or God knows you? How do you know? My question is, whenever you are doing stuff for God, what is your motive? If you are a preacher listening to me, what is your motive for preaching? Do you preach because you love God or his people? Or do you preach because you want to get something for yourself? Hallelujah. If you are in the church, be your usher or priest and worshiper, what is your motive? Are you doing it only because of fame? What is your motive for doing what you are doing? If you prophesied, what is your motive? Are you doing it only because you want to know you want to be known that you are a prophet or prophetess? I mean, what is your motive? Because he said, What well, on that day? I will say your words were iniquity. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do and your motive is wrong, God is not in it. Hallelujah. If your motive is for fame, even me be on Facebook. What is my motive? My motive, you ask God tonight, is to bring souls to the kingdom. I'm not doing this for fame. Mm -mm. That's why I don't want no title. I come on pastoral last in the all line there, but I'm not into titles. I'm saying witness because I want to be a true witness for the Lord. Hallelujah. But what is your motive for doing what you are doing? Whatever God has, I mean, what are you doing it? What are you doing it for? Instead of bringing souls to God, is it to lift up the name of Jesus? Or do you need a name for yourself? Whoever you are, whatever you are serving, be even at your job site, the things you do, what do you do it for? Is it for impression? What are you doing it for? Ask yourself that question. Because you don't want to be surprised on that day. Like I said, if your motor is different, he will say he doesn't know you. Mm -mm. Because your words was to glorify the flesh. Because this flesh, like I said on Thursday, this flesh will always want to be glorified. But thank God that we have the power in the name of Jesus to command this flesh to be solid. And that's why as a believer, you have to learn to sow to the spirit. Do not gratify the flesh. Don't do that. It is time to let the flesh to sit and let the Holy Ghost have its will. So what is your motive? If your motive is wrong, Jesus does not know you. Okay? If your motive for doing what you are doing for God is wrong, you can give the best money. You can give your task and offering until it reaches the mountain. If your motive is only to be known, mm -mm, he does not know you. But I pray tonight, God will help us to revisit our motive. Whatever we are doing, let us ask the Lord. It's a competition. What are you doing this for? Hallelujah. Help us, Holy Spirit. Those of you that want to give your life back to Christ tonight, or will, what is your motive? Are you coming to God because you hear Jesus Christ is good? Or because uh, he will buy you a new car? Or because you want to be married? What is your motive? And general repentance is when you recognize your need for help. And when you tell, Lord God, I need you. Without you, I am nothing. It's when your relationship is based on genuine love, genuine repentance. This day is so sad. People go to church for so many reasons. Some go to church for women, for new house, for this, for that. No direction. But I pray tonight God will align our will according to his motive in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So if your motive is out of line, Jesus Christ 
does not know you. That's what he just, we just read. He says, well, I don't know you. No matter how you prophesy, you cast out demons in my name. You did this in my name. If your motive was all wrong, he does not know you. The next one, how do you know that Jesus knows you? Is he Lord of your life? Every time we say that prayer, say, Jesus, come in my life and be my Lord. Tonight, as you unbelievers give your life to Christ tonight, all believers who will rededicate your life to Christ tonight, if you say, Lord, be the Lord of my life, what does that mean? What does that mean? If somebody is Lord over your life, what does that mean? Is he already Lord over your life? Or do you have any, you have other laws over you? People, God is calling us back to the true the essence of being safe. There's a serious business. Jesus Christ has to be true Lord over our life. To be Lord, it means to be master. That means has influence over your life. Does Jesus have influence over your life? Does he influence your affair? Does your decisions align with his decisions? Do you ask him before you do anything? Do you ask the Lord before you go anywhere? Is he Lord of your life? Is he the master of your life? Does he have control over your life? Over your family? Over your church? Over your children? Is the Lord Lord? He said, don't call me Lord if you don't do my will. I pray tonight he will be true Lord of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Are you connected with him? Are you in connection with the Lord daily? This Christian business is not off and on. It's a life of consistency. Don't say because I honor grace. Like I always say, grace is not license for sin. Grace is strength. Grace is Jesus. Grace is the Holy Ghost living in us to do the impossible. Grace help us when we fall to rise up and say, Jesus, I need you. That's grace. Grace does not keep you in a consistent lifestyle of sin. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Is he Lord of your life? Is he in control of your life? Are you asking him for things when you want to make a decision? It is time to go back to what is true. Is he leading your life? Is the Lord leading your life? The Bible says, those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the children of God. You know, it's so sad. Sometimes, like, I'm doing a study on the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we think we know the Holy Ghost, but we don't know him. Because if we really know the Holy Ghost, eh, the mistakes we made, the things we do, we won't do it. Because he is a gentle, loving, sweet presence with us. That is here to help us. He knows. Sometimes they be so hard. Sometimes the flesh wants to rule. But can we submit to him and say, Lord, help me? Every day? Not some days. Not when you feel good. No. It's not that, that when it comes to Christian now, today I feel good. So I don't love Jesus. Or today, I mean, today I feel good. I love Jesus. Today I don't feel good. I don't love him. No. You have to be consistent. That's why he said, no one knows the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will come. So if you are not consistent in your work with God, hey, I pray tonight God will help us. It's in law of your life. It's in through the law of your life. It's in through the law of your life. Thank you, Jesus. It's in through the law of your life. If the Lord is law of your life, then he knows you. But if he's not law, he doesn't know you. Because he only knows those who are his. Hallelujah. The next one is, are you walking in obedience? Are you walking in obedience? If you have a master, even on the earth now, if you have a master, who do you take instructions for? People of God, obedience matters in the sight of God. A lot of our obedience is going nowhere. Mm -hmm. If God said this Bible is the God for our lives, everyone should obey everything it says consistently. 
I am not seeing mistake. Because we are humans, sometimes we make mistakes. We are fallible, but thank God for His Spirit. But like I always say, let not your mistake be always falling and remaining there. No. A lifestyle or sin is not a mistake. If you are living a consistent life of any sin of any kind, unforgiveness, bitterness, pornography, adultery, fornication, smoking, drinking, all those things. You know, this is so sad. They say, well, God knows the heart. Hey! It is true. God knows the heart. And God is the God of the heart. But the Bible says, what is in the heart will come out when you speak, when you live. If you choose that God, go in heart, my sister, my brother, is going to show in your lifestyle. It's going to show in your confession. It's going to show the way you do things. Because the Holy Ghost is a generous Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. It's so sad that people say, oh, the Holy Ghost is in me. You can't the Holy Ghost, but you can dress anyhow, do anything. Mm. You can't the Holy Ghost. You are drinking, going to the wild palace, and you are comfortable. And you say you got the Holy Ghost. Come on. That can be the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost, I know, he will convert you of what you are doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, is the Lord, are you living in obedience to God? People, it is time to take our work with God very serious. It is time to walk in constant obedience. Again, it's not calling his name. It's not just going to church. Even tonight, you give your life to Christ. It requires a life of consistent obedience. Obedience means I will do what you say you will do. When it comes to ob obedience, you don't have your will. Mm -mm. It has to turn right. You turn right. He said turn life, you turn left. There is no conversation. You can't try to make it happen. No, you can't push it. Some of get so kind and say, God, you know, God, I will just do it this way. Then God will forgive me. No, you are working. Partial obedience is not obedience. God won for obedience, people. He said to obey is better than sacrifice. Do not play your sin and say, I'm going to do this. Then God will forgive me. No, don't do that. You are compromising. You are playing with grace. Don't do that. Don't say, oh, you know, in America, you have to last. Hey, That's the trap of the enemy. Because every sin is sin in the eyes of God. Lying can take you to hell. Fornication can take you to hell. Pornography, homosexual, whatever it is, can take you to hell. Any sin. There is no big sin, and there is no small sin. So that small, small lie you see you doing. God is washing you. But I pray tonight, the Lord will help us. It is time to rise up. It is time to rise up. To be obedient. Obedient to what God wants us to do. It is better to obey than to sacrifice. Don't intentionally wrong God. And grieve the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God living in us. Those of you tonight that will give your life to Christ. The Holy Ghost is going to descend upon you. And as you, as you honor him, as you allow him, you will enjoy his presence. Many a times, we grieve the Holy Ghost. Many a times. Hey, people, may God help us to repent. May the Lord help us to repent. May the Lord help us to repent. Don't play with the Holy Spirit. He is God living in you. Don't take advantage of him. Don't do that. Learn to submit to the word of God and live in obedience to the Lord God Almighty. Do what is right. Follow God's direction. Follow God's direction for your life. Don't live a double standard life. No. A righteousness will be judged in the sight of God. A righteous living will be judged in the sight of God. That's why as an individual... You don't have to follow everybody. Follow God. Don't follow no pastor, not even me. No. 
Follow the word of God. Follow what God's word says. Don't follow no one. Not because your pastor is doing it means you can do it. No, don't do that. Or not because, I don't know how to come. Not because your bishop is, don't do that. Do what God says. Not what man wants you to do. If they say this to you, and does not align with God's word, don't do it. Because you know what happened, right? The end is drawing near. We were in prayer yesterday. And the Lord said something, and I went on Facebook, I wrote it. Believers, we are going to go through tribulations. Believers, we are going to go through persecution. Don't think you will just live. And then Christ will just come and carry you. No, you have to be tested. The time is going to come when the mark of the beast is introduced. Where will you stand? Because there are some pastors with compromise. They are already. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So where do you stand? When they say, before you can buy food, you need the mark of the beast. Where do you stand? Will you compromise? No. It is time that every one of us know God for ourselves. Because the time is coming. You will not need you and God, not no man. Because you will have to make that decision. Whether God or man. Whether to submit to the government or to submit to God. But tell me, if you do not know the Lord, who will you submit to? But I pray tonight. That God will help us. That the Lord will help us to know Him in a genuine and personal way. Again, does Jesus know you? Please, tonight, we are about to be done. Please, tonight, do you do things under pressure? Do you do things to just impress people? People, huh? Do you do that to impress, to show up? The things you do, what do you do it for? May God help us to do things in accordance to his word. And because we love Jesus. St. John 6, 40. We are about to be done in a minute. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is time to know God. It is time to take our work with God so serious. We are here to coach you every day. You know, as humans, we need encouragement. We need people to help us, you know, encourage us. Hallelujah. Encourage us in righteousness, but not in sin. Hallelujah. Well, I came from St. John on 640. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. 640. Thank you, Jesus. Think about it tonight. Does Jesus know you? Does he really, really know you? Thank you, Holy Spirit. 640. The Bible says, And this is the word of him who sent me. That everyone who sees the Son and believes in Him may have everlasting life. And I will raise Him up on the last day. To know God is to know His will. It's to accept Jesus in your life as Lord and Savior. And after you have accepted Jesus Christ, to live according to His word. Consistent living. And once you do that, heaven is yours. Tonight, I have said a lot. Are you thinking about what I'm saying tonight? God's word has come tonight to strengthen us, to help us to rethink our life. The many things we are doing, if God is asking us, what is your motive? Do I already know you? On that day, when he said, well done, my good and faithful servant, is that what the Lord is going to say to you? Or what would the Lord say? When he said, depart from me, I know you not. Even though you pray in his name. Even though you cast out demons in his name. Even though you preach in his name. When the Lord said, depart from me, I know you not. May God help us. And your own believer listening to me, or believer who have come tonight to give your life back to Christ. My question is, does Jesus know you? If not, this is the moment. This is the time. So give it all to the Lord. There is the time. As long as you were alive, mercy is this. But once you die and go, mm -mm, no more mercy. In heaven, I mean in hell, there is no mercy in hell. 
You know, these days it's so hard. They say, oh, you preach too much about hell. But thank God I read my Bible. Jesus Christ preached about hell than any other place. Because guess what? I love the souls of God's people. And all I want to do is to make sure we all make heaven that day. That is my prayer every day. When I come on the bus, I say, God, I need three souls or more for you. People of God, it's time to know Jesus for real. Jesus is so real. Don't play no more games. This world tonight has come to help us to rethink. You may have been serving in church all these years. Maybe the Lord does not know you because... You are only serving to please men and not to please God. Don't do that. Don't do our service. Don't do that. Serve God because you love him. Serving in secret. Serving out of secret. Serving at all times. Be a Christian. That's the word. Be a Christian at all times. That way the Lord sees in secret. Guess what? There are many who are not popular. In hell. What does that mean? If you are on this earth and you are popular and not in hell, God does not know you. If you are popular in hell, that means you are making import in the kingdom. Souls are going to heaven because of you. Mm -hmm. So be careful. Everyone be careful. It is time for we all to even witness. If you are not witnessing as a believer, you don't know the Lord. Because you cannot go to heaven by yourself. Today I posted on Facebook this morning God gave me. And I asked, do you know, do you love Jesus? I have a few answers. Please tell somebody about him. People, it is time believers, even unbelievers, as you can your life to Christ today, please tell somebody about Jesus. That's the best gift you can give to anyone. Eternally. Imagine people enter in heaven because of you. But what will it be? You in hell. I mean, you in heaven and in hell. They will not love you. It is time to witness for the Lord. It is time to tell every your children at home. Make sure they are safe. Make sure. Mm -hmm. Even when you come across, Allah, you are crazy. Be nice and sweet. Say, so do you know Jesus? He's the way to God. Tell them. That's the best gift. Don't be ashamed. Of your faith. Do not be ashamed of your faith. Sure, because we Christians have the real deal. Mm -hmm. We have the real deal. Jesus Christ is the only way to go. It's not Muhammad. It's not Bula. It's not New Age. No, it's only Jesus. So don't be ashamed. Tell them the Holy Ghost will give you the bonus. Hallelujah. To do that. I pray tonight that God will help us to do what is right. So my people, we are about to pray. I'm going to pray for everyone tonight and trust God to help us. Please, tonight, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, everything I said, if he doesn't know you, please repent. Repentance, it means turning from where you are to where you need to be. Turning around back to the right thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you don't know the Lord tonight, please say this prayer after me. Or if you know the Lord and you find yourself in what I said, Playing church, wrong motive, disobedient, God is not law of your life, all these things. It is time to make it right. It is time to make it right. Hallelujah. The next meaning is not promised to you, somebody. The next second is not promised to you. No, it's not. But the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. So say, Lord Jesus, and mean this from your heart. I tell the prayer group every morning. When you say this prayer, it's not to just say something. No. Mean it from your heart. Because as you realize your need for help, then God comes in. But if you know you will say the prayer and go back to the same, old way, the same old way of life, then don't say because you're not ready yet. Hallelujah. It is time to be genuine with God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It is time to be genuine with God. God is a good God. He does not condemn us. I didn't kind of condemn anyone. Mm -mm. I came to bring God's word undiluted because God is saying my coming is near few weeks ago we were praying God said prepare my bride prepare the bride for the coming of the Lord that's our assignment on Facebook as a ministry preparing a bride 
Any bride know if you have been married before, you gotta be, you have to be prepared as a bride. You don't just go to the altar like that. No. So the same thing with Jesus. You have to be ready when he comes. Prepare yourself. Live a holy life. One of the ways to make heaven a living or holy life. I don't care how you go to church. If you are not holy, heaven is not for you. Period. Because God said with our holiness, no man shall see his face. I'm not saying don't enjoy life. Enjoy life on the earth. But enjoy life in, in, in righteousness. Even in your weakness, the Bible said we are strong. God is faithful. You may have been trying your best and you fall. Rise up. Rise up. Because you never know when the Lord is going to come. The Bible said, as of the day of Noah, the same thing during the days of Noah. That would be the same thing happening to us. People will be living normal life. Normal life. Marrying, doing all kinds of things. And then, boom, the Lord will show up. But if you are ready, no matter what time he shows up, you are ready. But I prayed that God will prepare us tonight. He will help us. It's by grace, oh. It's by grace. Grace strengthens you to do what is right. So please say this prayer with me tonight. Say, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Say, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the grace to hear your word. I thank you for not letting me to die in sin and go to hell. I'm sorry for all my sins. Forgive me and wash me clean in your precious blood. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. Sin and Satan has no dominion over me. I will follow you all the days of my life. Please write my name in the book of life. If you sell out prayer tonight and you are genuine about it, you are saved. The Lord bless you. The Lord grace you. May grace lead you to heaven. I pray for grace tonight to make heaven. In the name of Jesus. I see your life tonight by the blood of Jesus. I burn the hands of the enemy. You will serve God and serve the Lord well in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Now it's not all to eight. You have a life to live. Even those of you who just give your life back to Christ. The only way we can live this life consistently is by being in the word. Being in the word. Being consistent. Even that five minutes a day. Dedicate to God. Hallelujah. Find time to pray it by yourself. That's how you come to know the Holy Spirit. Like I said from the beginning, he is closer to us than we even think. So it's oh God, where are you? God is right there. God has been there all this while. God, where are you? Lord, I'm confused. God is right there. And all he needs you to do is to submit and say, Lord, here I am. So, may prayer a regular activity of your life. That's how you come to know this Jesus. And the next thing, find a church, a good church, oh, not any church. Okay? Find a good church. What they are preaching God's word on that What they preach the whole counsel of God. What they don't compromise God with, they tell you that gay lifestyle is wrong. They tell you that homosexual is wrong. Fornication is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Bible is wrong. Lying is wrong. Everything, I will call it out because guess what? These days, no one want to call it out. That's why we have all the competition, confusion, frustration in church. Hallelujah. Find a church that God will help you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are here three days a week. We are here on Sunday at 10. We are here on Thursday at 7. And Friday at 7 to help you out here with God. We got a prayer line from Monday to Wednesday from 5. Come and join us. You will get better in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you have been listening to me tonight. And maybe you are going through some issues of life. I want to just pray with you tonight. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I signed this up in the beginning. On Christ, the sort of right I stand. All other ground is sinking sin. It is time to stay on that side of the rock. I pray to now, whatever you are going through, may the Lord help you. May you stay on that side of the rock. May nothing cause you to waver in your faith in the name of Jesus. I pray for strength to serve the living God. Strength to serve the living God. Strength to serve the living God. In the name of Jesus. I see your life tonight. 
with the blood of Jesus. Those of you who are sick, Malatalis Kabotola, La Nanabo Shakaye Kalamahaya, Manabo Shake, Yabo Si Kalabo Shak. Let us hear the word of God through tonight, right now, in the name of Jesus. I declare you hear from the cross of your head to the sole of your feet in the name of Jesus. Those of you, Manabo Shake, Rebebo Shake, Rebosha. Malatalis kambu talai kandiri osha nane osha malika le le mo kopo malapa bakutu ri abasha hey hakali karama hakarama sha what there is confusion to none I speak the peace of God I speak the peace of God in the name of Jesus may the Lord give you peace in your situation Hallelujah thank you Holy Spirit we bless you whatever you are just speaking to just bless the Lord tonight. We are almost done. God is good. And all of the time, God is good. We serve an awesome God. Don't give up in your work with God. These words have come to help you to make you stronger. Because God wants you to make heaven. He is more interested in your eternity than any other thing. To not compromise one minute for anyone's sake. The Lord will help you. Grace is available. To strengthen you. The Lord bless you all tonight. And I'll see you all tomorrow at 7 p.m. in the evening. I don't know what God wants to do tomorrow. I don't know. But maybe the heat. I don't know. But when we come tomorrow at 7, we will find out. The Lord bless you. And give my name a witness, Princess We say from the Divine Goddess International Church. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And have an awesome life. Somebody, you will sleep sound tonight. Mm -hmm, you will. I declare the peace of God upon you right now. The peace of God. The peace of God. You have been crying. Your pillow has been wet all the time. He's Lord. Oh. He's Lord. He truly loves you. It's no more time to trust men. It's time to trust the Lord. It is time. You know, sometimes when you're going through the issues of life, God is calling you to himself. Thank you for that prayer line. Never. God bless you. It says, Nora, God bless you. Thank you for that. Sometimes you go on to do stuff. It may be God is calling you to draw back to you. You self God. I don't know you. But you are being confused, crying every night. It is time to turn to God. Those things are happening because the Lord wants you to come close to him. There is nothing good out there in the world. Oh, no. No, my sister, no. Mm -mm. Only Jesus Christ. It's the best gift of the word. I will pray for you. Father, I pray now for your daughter in the name of Jesus. I pray for strength and grace to serve you, Father God. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. If you can eat Boston, that would be nice. You need prayer. Thank you, Holy Spirit. This mountain has been removed. This mountain has been removed. Say, stole this mountain has been removed by my spirit, says the Lord. It's not by might. The Lord says to you, sister, it's not by might. It's not by power. But by the spirit of the living God, Holy Ghost, let your presence descend upon her right now, Lord. Hey, Lord, let your presence, your presence that makes a difference, oh God. Your presence that caught depression to go. Malatalis, come on, Leokoto. Let your presence surround your daughters tonight. The Lord will help you. The prayer line number is 515-604-9917. Access code 497-391. 515-604-9917-497-391 pound. And contact us on our website at divinegardensusa.org. We are here to help you out. The Lord bless you all tonight. Hmm. There's a need tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I'm trying to leave you, but the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Sister, it is well. It is well. It is well. 
God is working all things out for your good, okay? You will appreciate God one year from now as you make that decision right for him. One year from now, you will testify unto the glory of God. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. And the Lord cause his face to shine upon you all. God bless you all. And I'll see you all tomorrow at 7 p.m. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.